Oh dear. I'm going to get into so much trouble through this video. Roll titles. <laughs> Brian James at Micro Four Thirds Guide with you once again, and um, I'm going to get in so much trouble with this video because I always do when I do these sort of videos because people have different opinions, which is great. So, what's my opinion on this? Well, I'm going to tell you why I think Micro Four Thirds cameras, and one in particular, are the very best cameras for a beginner to start photography with. Now, what used to constitute a beginner with photography used to be a youngster pick up the camera for the first time and seeing the images. It's not what happens these days. What you have these days, people have cameras on their mobile phones and they've been taking pictures for ages, absolutely ages. So they're used to the idea of taking images, but they're not used to the idea of a a normal camera and this is where the difference lies so when I'm on about a new a first camera for a beginner we're not talking about somebody who's beginning in photography we're talking about people who are coming to using proper cameras rather than other devices to take the photographs with we've all been used to this idea of mobile phones I'm, I'm recording on a mobile phone now with a gimbal so we're used to this idea of mobile phones as our cameras. We look in through the screen on the back, we're pointed at something, and we take our photographs. Or we pointed at something, we're taking our videos, because video is just as important these days for photography as a normal camera is. So we're used to the idea of having both photo and video. And if we give up on that idea, then we start getting some problems. So any camera that we're going to use is going to have to fulfill both still photographs and video to be useful to the photographer today. But the trouble with a lot of the cameras is they are so feature packed, they are so full of all sorts of things which can become very confusing to photographers if they're not used to it. Remember most camera phones Although they've got a load of features on them, most of them are artificial intelligence. They're not necessarily what are chosen by the photographers to use. And so, people coming onto photography from cameras need to have those features made easy and be effective. So the problem with getting a huge, great big camera although full frame cameras might be very good. The problem with getting full, huge grippy cameras is, one, they're a lot heavier than a normal phone. Two, a lot bulkier than a normal phone. Three, a lot of the features on there, you have to physically know how to use. And if you don't know how to physically use them, I think a lot of people will be put off and the camera will be put down and never used again. Now, I've been an advocate of Micro Four Thirds for a long time for various reasons which fit me. But the more and more I've thought about what camera I would recommend to somebody starting in photography in 2023, the more I'm convinced that Micro Four Thirds is the way to go. Because with Micro Four Thirds, it's a small, neat, compact system. If you want it to be used like a mobile phone, it pretty much can be. But on almost all the Micro Four Thirds cameras, you can push them to be, well, push them to the extremes, make them into incredibly useful, totally usable, full featured cameras. So what would I suggest would be the camera for a beginner? Well, a lot depends on what they want and what they would like to achieve. Now, one of the things that I would suggest on that is to make it as mobile phone like as possible small neat easy so we're talking about the ep and epl range from olympus and probably the gx and if you're going older the gm ranges 
from Lumix. We need them to have good quality. Mobile phones now have 12 megapixel, like my iPhone 13 here has a 12 megapixel camera in it. And we need something bigger than that. Well, all the microphone thirds at least equal that or are bigger. In fact, any modern Mega 4 thirds camera is considerably bigger than that, insofar as megapixel count. So we're exceeding what we have on mobile phones. The larger ones, G9s, EM1s, OM1, not really fitting the bill as far as this crossover. So for me, it would be probably one of the GXs or the EPLs. EPLs though don't have a viewfinder and if I'm going to go onto a camera rather than a camera phone I think electronic viewfinder is the big difference. All the mobile phones you can see a screen in the back but to go into photography for me there is a beauty to bring in a camera up to the eye so you can see what you're actually doing especially in bright light today. I'm, I'm here in Paphos it is really bright looking at this mobile phone and I can hardly see myself. I can't see any of the contrast properly. I can't easily see the image because of the glare. So, I think an electronic viewfinder is essential. And I don't like spending extra. So I'm gonna count the Olympus EPL and EPs out. We do have the EM10s. Superb camera. I suggest my sister bought one for her first camera. And I stand by that. She got a Mark II. But it's Mark 2, Mark 3, Mark 4, fantastic cameras. The, um, the GX range though, GX7, GX8, GX85, GX80, GX9, all from Lumix, excellent. But there's a limitation of those cameras. Most of them have a flippy screen. So you can actually flip the screen up and down, which is great. And from a still photography point of view, it really is good. From a, a video point of view, a lot of these people who are gonna be coming at the, this from mobile phones are used to doing selfies, like this. Oh, bit of shade, wonderful. Doing selfies. With a flippy screen, you can't easily see the selfie. With a tilt swivel screen, you can. So although I'm looking at things like the um, the GX7, GX80, GX85, GX9, they just have flippy screens, not good if you're doing vlogs. They've also don't have mic inputs. The mic inputs can be really useful if you're going to be doing any video work. So maybe discount them. That leaves us for the GX8, which I love. You've seen my videos on the GX8, but it is bigger somewhat defeating some of that object I've just been talking about. So do we have left? G100. Unfortunately, the G100, although it gets such a slagging from people, really is my idea of the perfect beginner's camera. The electronic shutter, yes, it has problems because people do like mechanical shutters, but for a beginner, perfectly adequate. It has a tilt swivel screen. It has an electronic viewfinder. It has a mic input. It's tiny. Combine that with the 12 to 32, 3.5 to 5.6 lens, the little expanding pancake lens, and you get an amazing little camera. Yes, the uh, image stabilization is just digital, which gives quite a crop. But if you're using it with that little 12 to 32, the lens has image stabilization. Great for selfie mode. 20 megapixel, 4K. Now some of the earlier ones, the GXs, don't have 4K. Some do. So for me, even though it's probably one of the most hated cameras in uh, the reviews, I still think the G100... Hmm. I think the G100 is the camera that I would recommend above all others for people wanting to get into photography for the proper camera. It has all the manual modes, all the auto modes, great autofocus, superb autofocus in fact, great sound, great connectivity, fits in the pocket, 
And like all the Micro Four Thirds lens cameras, you can fit all the Micro Four Thirds lenses onto it, including up to the massive ones. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments below as to what you think about the uh, the ideal beginner camera. I'd be recommending the G100. I still think it's great. I think it has drawbacks, but there again, I think every camera has drawbacks. But let me know in the comments below. Now, before I go, there's a list here of all my fantastic patrons from my Patreon channel. If you fancy becoming a patron, there's details in the comments below. And also, if you'd like to buy me a copy, there's details there. And don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and a like, because that helps YouTube's algorithms to spread the word further and further afield so more people see the videos. And if you're not a subscriber, why not? It's free. Hit the subscribe button below. Till the next time, this is Brian James at Microphone Thirds Guy saying, enjoy your photography. Have fun with your photography. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.